guys, Eric here with Mosque Homebrew, and today we're doing a peanut butter porter. Um, it's gonna be five five gallon batch. We think it's gonna be about six percent. So let's get in the ingredients and I'll show you what I'm doing. All right, for today's batch, we got um, ten pounds of pale or ten pounds of two row, a pound and eleven ounces of carafone, fourteen ounces caramel crystal malt. 14 ounces of chocolate malt, 7 ounces of black, this is patent malt, uh, and then we have 1 ounce of Northern Brewer hops and 1 ounce of Willamette hops. I think that's how you pronounce that. Um, we also have 2 pounds of PB2 going into this batch along with 2 ounces of coconuts at the end of the boil. So. Um, I've never used PB2 yet, uh, Eric has, and he said he's had good results with it. Um, I know I talked to the guy at the homebrew shop, he said that uh, if you do plan on using it, make sure uh, you mix it very well, and I heard, I found a bunch of articles online that says that too, because you have a risk of infection. Uh, but my plan is to take all of the PB2, I'm actually going to take some uh, wort out of the kettle. Uh, at about 15 minutes, you're supposed to add the PB2 at 10 minutes. So I'm gonna take a little bit out at uh, 15 minutes into a separate pot. I'm gonna mix all the PB2 into that with that pot, and then I'm going to pour it back into the kettle. That way, I ha I know that it's mixed well, and I don't have any you know dough balls or anything like that that's going to infect the beer later. So right now I just matched out. Gravity reading, I wanted 5.6. Um, I actually got 5.3. So that was way more off than I thought I was gonna be. We'll see, it's still gonna make good beer, hopefully. Right now I have about seven and a half gallons in the kettle. It said in the recipe online that you gotta take into account about a, probably a gallon's worth of uh, true from PB2. So I took that into account along with, you know, we lose about another half gallon. So hopefully boiling off, I lose a little bit more. It's pretty hot in here. So I think the evaporation is gonna make me, you know, like the temperature in here, just gonna make me lose that much more. So hopefully I lose about two gallons um, overall. And there's not gonna be a whole lot of hops in this brew. So I'm not really worried about that, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, we're about to reach a boil right now. So I gotta get going on that. And we're gonna add our first hops of Northern Brewer. It's uh, gonna be an ounce. All right, so we just had reached a boil. Fought that boil, boil over. Almost got away from me there. But we are going to add, ooh, smells pretty good. Uh, we're gonna add Ger German Northern Brewer hops. Uh, it's an alpha acid of 8.2 for 60 minutes. And we're gonna start our timer for 60 minutes. Fuck, that's hot. Ooh, woo -hoo. Ooh, fuck. guys we're at about 20 minutes left in our boil we got an ounce left of Willamette um, so we're gonna add that to the boil now all right guys so I got about uh, 15 minutes left um, I'm gonna add a warp off tablet uh, I gotta drain off about a gallon and a half maybe two gallons of this wort and I'll put it in this pot then I'm going to take the PBW and I'm going to mix it really well and I'm going to pour it back in for the remainder of the boil at 10 minutes. So let's see how this goes. Hopefully uh, everything goes well, but I, this is the only way I know how to do it and it to be mixed well enough where I know that there's no dough balls or anything like that in there. So let's do this. So right now I got this... Uh, 
this hand mixer. It's a quick mixer. Um, I'm just gonna pour the PVW into the wart and I'm gonna mix it around, hopefully get it stirred up pretty good. recap what just happened took me way longer than I thought to mix all of it it was you know I probably should have got a little bit more work probably about two gallons of wort I should have put in there I did get away with doing it one just took a lot longer to do um, I ended up pouring the rep that mixture into the kettle took a little bit more wort and swirled it around inside the pot because there was still a thick film of that peanut butter stuck to the pot so I figured I'd try to get as much of that peanut butter out of that pot so I put a little bit more wort in there put it right back into the kettle stirred it around real good I gave the boil an extra couple of minutes just because I went over my time and I actually added it at about eight minutes instead of ten minutes so I just let it go a little bit longer um, two minutes isn't gonna make a huge difference I don't think uh, but right now we're cooling down. I am close to pitching temperature. I am, uh, or at least putting it into the fermenter. I might just put it in the fermenter here in a second, um, but we're down to about 78 degrees. Uh, we've been chilling now for about 10, 15 minutes, but I did take my gravity reading. Um, gravity reading was 1062. We were shooting for 1070. So we didn't get as good as efficiency. This, this looks like chocolate milk. Um, smells like peanut butter. Well, definitely tastes like peanut butter, but it's, you know, kind of bleh. So hopefully all that peanut butter, peanut butter is supposed to settle out. Um, probably gonna get, supposed to get a pound of true, or a gallon of trube. That's not gonna come with this uh, from, from, the, from the boil. So, uh, Hopefully, uh, we're gonna pitch into the fermenter here in a second. I have no problems, but then we're gonna uh, put the fermenter inside, let it get down to pinchy temperature. All right guys, peanut butter porter is kegged up, ready to go. Took about two, or it took about a week to carb up. Uh, I did it at 12 PSI for about five to six days, just to the, where the carbonation was just right. It's actually been sitting in my kegerator for a little bit now. I've been kind of sitting on it, letting it, like the peanut butter flavor develop a little bit more, but over time the peanut butter flavor has kind of just gone away. I'm not sure why that is, I guess more, Brews with peanut butter will kind of give me some more insight on how to brew with peanut butter in general. Overall, it's got really good color to it. It's got almost no head though, so when you pour it out of the tap, it's got you know a like, decent amount of head, but it's very thin and it just goes away pretty much immediately. Using peanut butter in most beers, you know, you don't get as like good head retention. So I'm assuming that's what's happening here. Overall taste though, when I first poured it, it was first couple weeks were pretty peanut butter forward. But over time, the, like probably it's been about maybe three weeks, maybe a little bit more than that, three and a half, since I actually brewed this beer and the peanut butter flavor has kind of went away. Um, it's just not what, it's just not what I wanted in this beer. I wanted a, like a overall, punch of peanut butter like just like just peanut butter forward basically it's like a Reese's cup peanut butter I didn't I added chocolate and I added peanut butter in this beer but I just just don't really get a whole lot I get a little bit of chocolate but it's almost like an off flavor of chocolate but overall um, not the greatest home brewing's experimentation so 
You get some good batches, you get some bad batches. I'm not saying it's a bad batch, but I'm not saying it's very good either. So if you guys like these grain glass videos, let us know. Uh, we'll be happy to make more of them. Just, these just take a lot more time. I want to thank today's sponsor is Imperial Yeast. I used Imperial Flagship Yeast in this batch to brew this beer. It actually did uh, pretty well. I uh, had no, no trouble. Imperial Yeast is 100% organic and it's got 2 billion cells, so it's really good yeast. So you guys should check them out, Imperial Yeast. But that'll do it for this video. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think. Follow us on social media and I'll see you next time. This is Mosky Homebrew. Cheers.